Este... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best, fancy, fancy, ultra special package test location in the southwest of England. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, is an unboxing like no other. And the reason for that is because I have never had uh, picks from this gentleman before, but we have been corresponding for the best part of a year uh, over the Instagram at And of all the people uh, whose picks I've been excited to get my hands on, very few are quite as heavily touted as the Plectrums from Swart. Now, this box has arrived. I have it arrived about an hour ago. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do anything with it at all other than look at it. So I'm going to open it for the first time uh, in full view of all of you out there in the Plectroverse. Uh, I know that there's a number of picks in there. Uh, I'm hoping they survived the journey because it's been in transit for some time. But now that it is here, let us share in this adventure together. So, without further ado, let's change that camera angle and do the business. Okay, so here we are. It's the box. So a little bit of background. Uh, Emmanuel makes everything using hand tools. There's no power tools involved. It's all by hand. It's all using natural materials. Doesn't use any plastics or anything like that. And that's part of the reason why I'm so excited to see what's in here. So. I'm a little bit tense, actually. <laughs> okay, so, I've got my name on. So what we have are two things, and I'm gonna put this one off to the side because that is for a giveaway that's coming up. In here we have uh, this little package with my name on, faithfully taped and covered in masking tape. Now he did say, and this is this come back to something I was talking about on the live stream the other day, uh, about how packaging is so important and this is a prime example because I know, and you'll be able to see from his channel uh, if you go and follow his work plectrums, but um, Emmanuel made this box just to ship these picks to me. So it did not exist. Wow. Hey, come on, look at that. Right. Now, the question is, I'm not a stupid man. How do I gain access to this? Is it a slidey? Is it a lift? It's a lifty. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, big brain confirmed. Here we go. So beautifully made. Let's see if everything survived the journey. Oh wow, look at that. So I'm going to take everything out and then we'll go through it one at a time. Just before I share the pics with you, I want to talk about this box because it's re- oh, in fact, let's get it up to the old, uh, the old close-up here. So I'll turn it over and see how beautifully made that is all the detail and effort that's gone into that. Now, obviously, he didn't need to do this. He could have just shipped it to me um, in normal packaging, but... And it's got a lining. Yeah. I am genuinely, genuinely proud of that. That is wonderful. Let's talk about the picks. So first things first. This piece here is made from boxwood. This has um, this is Emmanuel's little signature divot in the top, and as I predicted from seeing his work, it is perfectly finished and oiled. There's not a, a hint of the fact that this has ever been anything other than what it is. So I'm over the moon about that. That is beautiful. Let's get the uh, the calippos. See what we're looking at here. That is 2.9 millimeters thick. Very nice. So this is the tortilla. Uh, this is a sort of experimental model, and it's also made from boxwood, I think. 
but as you can see, it's absolutely beautifully finished. Like, hilariously good. And the thing is, I'm impressed with this sort of work when it's plastics, but when it's wood, it's a completely different skill set and even more impressive, I think. That is 6.1. Let's take into account the fact that these calipers are sometimes a little bit um, keen and uh, it might be just a dead 6 mil, but I want to be honest with the numbers that I have presented to me. So see just here, and it's really weird doing this under the camera, just here in the top, there is, you can see it against the weight of my hand, there's a little extra dip in the top bit. That is some real detailed work. And it, this is always the thing with wood picks, is that I know that people give wood picks a bad time because they wear down, whatever, but, um, but they don't wear any quicker than, say, nylon or anything like that. And it's such an incredible looking thing. The one thing that is really wonderful about wood picks is the fact that you don't get much in the way of string noise, especially if they're correctly finished and oiled and everything. So beautiful, beautiful work. Oh, that's a chonky boy. I think that this is maple, but it certainly looks like it. But it is as close to a 351 as there is anything in the package. However, this is a beefy lad. I'm going to say about 6. 5.6. 5.6 mil thick. Manuel seem, seems to be very keen on this whole rounded tip thing. So the end of this is very, very smooth. It's a bit like the Liggett Sweep that I've got, which is acrylic. But this is wood. Look at that. Look how immaculate it is. I know it sounds like I'm getting very carried away with this, but that's literally why you're on, you're on a pick channel, do you know what I mean? So if I wasn't getting excited with this, what's the point? Now we're going to get into some real avant-garde stuff here. This is the J3T, which is like a jazz thing. This is made from Gaboon Ebony. Reminds me of the my one of my all-time favourite books, um, The Pentateuch Retold by Patrick Woodroff. And that looks like the symbol for darkness. I love this little recess, look at that. Look at the little curve. All the tips on these are so immaculately rounded. Let's see. 2.2 millimetres thick. 2. Point, well, 2.3, 2.2. Only right in, in between the two things. Really nice grain on that. It's like my grain on my plectrums is such an important characteristic. This is made from Cowbone. And this is his new version of this pick. The previous version had a little black sort of uh, flap over the top that I think was made from um, Gaboon Ebony as well. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to convey this because of the way the light is, but the tip of this, the surface is matte and then the tip here is polished the whole way across in this really, really perfect arc, like really, really careful arc that's been done so that it's really even, There's, everything is wonderfully symmetrical and you can't see any tool marks. Um, just absolutely banging. I can't wait to play with these, I really can't. Oh, that's a really wee dinky thing, isn't it? This is a wee micro J3. Very similar to the onigiri in shape, but a little thicker. I'm gonna say about three mil, so I guess. So there we are, 4.3 millimeters. Need to get my eye in still. <laughs> Judging millimeters by eye is quite difficult, I'm not gonna lie. So don't roast me in the comments. Um, really, really nice smooth tip on this. This is another very rounded end. I wasn't, ex well, I knew there was gonna be loads, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a tough old act this because I'm desperate to tear through these and then um, I wanna give each one the time as well. So categorical example of finishing, right? Look at this. I don't even know what to say. It's so, so, so smooth. I almost don't want to, I mean, there is a pick here I'm definitely going to play with, like no questions asked, but th this is, there's so many of these, I, c I almost don't want to even touch them. 6.8 millimeters on this one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the last two picks that are in here uh, that I can show you today. I'm not going to show you the giveaway stuff today, but the, the last two picks that are in here, these are the two that I'm the most excited about. And I'm going to go with this 
outrageous thing first. This is an ergo um, pick made from coconut shell. Now coconut shell is quite a, it's a relatively common material in boutique circles, it's more common in jazz. Look at the ergonomics of this. So it fits with all the bits of your hand and curves around that way. Now, obviously I'm going to review these and give these the full, you know, heavy repping treatment, but just as a piece, as a conceptual piece, this is one, this is something I've been talking about quite a lot recently, the fact that the, the pick in a modern Western sense is still relatively young. And there are no, I mean, yeah, there's the teardrop and the Jazz 3 and 3, 4, 6 and everything, but there's no real rules for this. There's nothing to say that a pick has to be any sort of shape, as long as, that, as it has a grip and a striking edge. So, I love that this is a thing. I love that it's a thing. It looks more like the jawbone of some ancient statue than a plectrum. Drum roll, please. This is the moment, ladies and gentlemen. I've been wanting to talk about this pick for a whole year. Right, this is it, okay? This is it. Aww. Yes, I'm making the noises. Look at this. This is just, it, it's, this is the, it was the first pick, when I started heavy repping um, back in 2018, this is the first pick that I saw online like once I've been into it a couple of months that I, I thought to myself okay this is a thing right this is an actual thing that people can get excited about because this is flame maple on the top and back then it's got ebony in the sides and it's got a bone core like that it's just it's just outrageous I've been waiting to hold this pick for a year a year I've been waiting on this it's like nothing else I've ever played. And I love the way it looks. What a thing. What a thing. This moves all this moves out of the realm of normal off the peg plectrums and into like serious boutique territory. What a thing. Assessment time. Well kids, I'm not gonna lie. Um that's probably the best thing that's happened this week. Absolutely jazzed to be able to hold. Genuinely, I really can't tell you like how exciting it is to have these because of all the picks that I've come across in the Plectroverse so far, because I, I suppose it's one of those things, because I had no way of getting these done any quicker than they got done, I have had to wait for them. It's not like I could buy, because they're all made to order. I couldn't just buy a model and see how I got on with it, and then wait until the other stuff turned up. I had to wait until these exact plectrums were done. Now, Emmanuel made these for me, which was incredibly kind, and we have struck up something of a, a friendship over the last uh, year and a bit. But nevertheless, I cannot eulogize about somebody's work if I genuinely don't feel that way about it. Even if just this one had turned up today, I would still be sitting here going, about everything. I hope that you will go and follow his work online. Um, like I said, this represents hours of work. Hours of work. Of sanding, of oiling, of polishing, of finessing, of making, just making the box alone took days just because of the detail involved. And uh, for those makers out there who've been contacting me privately saying, this guy's stuff looks like the beans. Let me tell you, it is. Go and have a look at Zwart. Um, he shows all of his working, uh, how things get from one state to another. It's it's an education in craft as well as just in picks. Uh, so very, very heavily recommended and a good day. It's a good day. So I hope you enjoyed this little unboxing video here and uh, I'll be back in due course with uh, more episodes of the Plexicon, the science, history of the pick, reviews, interviews, and so on. But in the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping, and I shall see you soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy.